Hi again. Today I'm going to continue with the next topic, which is the centrifugal flow compressor. In the previous slides, we have gone through the introduction to compressor and uh, let us uh, recap back in terms of what we have done so far. We have looked at there are uh, different types of compressor available and at the same time the function of the compressor. And we also look into the comparison between the two types of compressor, which are centrifugal flow compressor as well as axial flow compressor. Okay, when we look into an uh, axial flow compressor as well as centrifugal flow compressor, normally we will have to go through in terms of the overview, what is it all about of these two types of compressor. And we will definitely want to uh, look into the principles of operation. We will look into the construction and in the, for the type of uh, centrifugal flow compressor, we will look into the component, which include the impellers as well as the diffusers. Okay, um, as we all know that centrifugal flow compressors have a single, right? Normally it is a single type and also double side impeller or double entry impeller, right? There are also cases where they come with a single entry shrouded and occasionally this two-stage single-sided impeller is used in different type of scenario. The impeller is supported in a casing, right? So uh, in the construction of the centrifugal flow compressor where we have, uh, this is a typical example of an impeller, right? And this is a typical example of a diffuser and this is a typical example of so it also contains a ring of diffuser vein. When we look into the operation, we will later find out what are the functions of these components. If a double entry impeller is used, the airflow to the rear side is reverse direction. So imagine this uh, first impeller. So the direction is that way. And the other one is um, the second entry is the other way around. So, and in this particular case, a plenum chamber is required. So there is a, what we call it, a, a casing under uh, to, to direct the flow around the impeller section. The impeller is rotated at high speed by the turbine, okay, because it is connected via the shaft and air is continuously induced to the center of impeller. And what we know as centrifugal action causes it to flow radially. So it flows outward right, uh, along the veins to the impeller tip. So imagine from the middle, it goes outward, right? thus accelerating the air and also causing a rise in pressure to occur. So. Later, we will look at the cross section of the impeller and you will see the different, uh, the, all the changes of the pressure as well as the velocity along the blade of the impeller. So the engine intake duct may contain veins that provide an initial swirl to the air entering the compressor. So there are cases whereby uh, the intake, the inlet for the uh, centrifugal flow compressor, they have veins that provide initial swirl. Okay, this is a cross section of uh, a deep example of an impeller. So we have the impeller here and we have the diffuser. So imagine the air starting from this side. Okay, and it goes into the impeller and out into the so this particular graph shows the pressure and velocity changes through the centrifugal compressor. So the air on leaving the impeller 
passes into the diffuser section where the passages form divergent nozzle okay and uh, that convert most of the kinetic energy right the kinetic energy from the air okay will be converted into pressure energy so the pressure will build up further whereas the velocity will drop in the way out so in practice it is usual to design the compressor so that about half of the pressure rise occurs in the impeller that is ideal we want half of the pressure rise occurs in the impeller section and the other half will occurs in the diffuser section that's the, the ideal condition okay. so to maximize the airflow and pressure rise through the compressor requires the impeller to be rotated at a minimum speed of 1600 feet per second so by operating at such high speeds the air velocity from the impeller is increased so that greater energy is available to conversion for conversion to pressure right so we want as much as possible the kinetic energy to be converted into pressure energy in terms of the principle of operation eh, to maintain the efficiency of the compressor it is now necessary to prevent excessive air leakages we don't want air to be uh, there are leakages okay between the impeller and the casing imagine there are casing we want the casing the, 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 the distance between the casing and the impeller as small as possible okay this can only be achieved by keeping the clearance as small as possible so this is this is just a picture showing impeller working clearing clearance and air leakages so imagine there are air can be uh, leaking out through various points eh, towards uh, the exit of the diffuser let's us move into the construction the construction of the compressor centers around the three main item one is the impeller then the diffuser and the air intake system very simple okay? so the impeller shaft rotates the in ball and roller bearing so the impeller itself is connected by a shaft we call it the impeller shaft and it is being supported by ball or normally roller bearing and is either common to the turbine shaft or split in the center and connected by a coupling which is usually designed for ease of attachment and now we'll go into the impeller uh, uh, section the impeller itself consists of a forged disc it's just that's one buck metal then we uh, cut it into the shape of the impeller it is uh, it is not like we combine parts and parts to be to make it as an impeller so it is readily readily disposed vanes on one or both sides forming convergent passages in conjunction with the compressor casing so these are a picture of a typical impellers one is a single right this is the uh, single and this one is the double eh? double and single the impeller itself okay when we look into the veins the veins may be swept back but for ease of manufacturer straight railer veins are usually employed because if you want to make complicated design it is much more efficient but it's hard to make right so to ease the form from axial flow in the entry duct onto the rotating impeller the veins in the center of the impeller are curved in the direction of rotation so there is, this is the reason why the impeller blades are curved so that it can move uh, in the rotation it is not in the other uh, it cannot move uh, in the it will defeat the purpose eh, if it is in the wrong direction so the curved sections may be integral with the radial veins or form separately for easier and more accurate manufacturer manufacture eh, sorry the final part is the diffuser so in the diffuser it is normally have an assembly that is integrated part of the compressor casing or 
a separate separately attached assembly so it depends on the design whether it is a separate or it is a come together so in each instance it consists of a number of veins formed tangentially to the impeller so the veins passages are divergent to convert the kinetic energy into pressure energy so we want to convert more kinetic energy into pressure energy in the diffuser and the inner edges of the veins are in line with the direction of the resultant airflow from the impeller so imagine an airflow entry to the diffuser so the clearance between the impeller and the diffuser so this is the clearance eh, is an important factor right as too small clearance we don't want it to be too small because what will happen is that it will incur aerodynamic buffeting impulses i want you to look into what is the aerodynamic buffeting impulses okay so try to uh, search in other source that could be transferred to the impeller and create unsteady airflow vibration so if you have it very small aerodynamic buffeting impulses will occur the the uh, impeller blades itself will be vibrate and disaster can happen okay so this is these are the uh, diffuser veins that i mentioned just now okay, that's all for now we will continue uh, to the next section which is axial flow thank you